Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. Over the years on this channel, I've looked at many different single board computers, some of which are now far more powerful, but also far more expensive than the original Raspberry Pi. In this video, I therefore thought I'd ponder the future of single board computers. Technically, any computer with all of its components included on one circuit board could be called a single board computer or an SBC. However, in this video, I'm focusing on SBCs like those we see here. These are all of the different single board computers I've reviewed on this channel. And this category of single board computer came into existence in February 2012 with the launch of the first Raspberry Pi. We can see that here. This is a Raspberry Pi Model B. We'd now call it Raspberry Pi 1 Model B, but of course it wasn't a Model 1 when it came out. And in case you're wondering, there was a Raspberry Pi Model A, which launched a few months after this. And I think the best way to start in our consideration of the future of single board computers is to take a minute to reflect on the evolution of the Raspberry Pi. And if we go to take a close look, therefore, at the Raspberry Pi 1 Model B, this had a single core 700 megahertz CPU, 512 megabytes of RAM. It had two USB 2 ports and 100 megabit Ethernet. Some things don't change very much on a Pi. It had a very prominent RCA Jack 4 composite video out in addition to the HDMI video out. And perhaps most significantly, certainly compared to modern boards, it had a full size SD card for, for storage, which was a, clearly a big thing. It stuck out the edge of the Pi. The Pi wasn't quite as refined then as it, as it was now, but still an amazing board for the price. For your £25, $35, this really kicked off a revolution back in 2012. But of course, things evolved very rapidly after that. And not least in 2014, we got to this, which was the Raspberry Pi 1 Model B Plus. And this added quite a few things. It gave us not least a couple more USB ports. It didn't change the CPU and the RAM. The onboard storage, though, did shift to being on a, a micro SD card. You can see the slot there, as we all know and love today. That seems so obvious now, but it didn't happen on, on the first Pis. They added a few more GPIO pins. This has got the 40 pin header we now take as standard, but we had 26 pins on the initial Pi. They took the composite video and chucked it into the uh, 3.5 millimeter TRRS jack. And uh, I think the other thing about this board most significantly perhaps is the form factor changed a bit, a bit more compact. And of course this form factor has become almost a default standard in the industry. Because not only have all Pi since then used this form factor, but also boards like the, the Tinker board and the Rock 64 have stuck to this form factor as well. And in some ways that's a good thing. It's given us some level of standardization. But I also think this form factor will have to evolve in time because some of the features we'll see on future single board computers that I'll come to later in the video will be very difficult to get them onto a board with this exact form factor and dimension. So I'm not sure it's really a good thing that the industry keeps following the exact structure of the Pi. Returning to Pi evolution, in February 2015, we moved up to the Raspberry Pi 2, which moved us from a single core board with a 700 MHz processor to a quad core board with a 900 MHz processor, and it gave us one gigabyte of RAM. So this was a major move forward. I really liked the Raspberry Pi 2. But it didn't hang around in the market for very long because by March 2016, we got this, the, the Raspberry Pi 3, moving us up to a 1.2 gigahertz, 64-bit quad-core processor, and more significantly than that, perhaps, adding wireless networking to the board. And then in the spring of 2018, we move on to this, the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus with a 1.4 gigahertz quad-core processor and also improved thermal management. So we've got a, this nice little heat spreader, for example, on top of a system on the chip. And having talked about the Pi in terms of the progression I've just shown you, we should also not forget various sort of branches of Pi evolution. The most significant, I think, being the Raspberry Pi Zero models, of which there's been three different ones now. And these give us a, a sort of cut down Pi, which gives us a, a reasonable amount of single board computer power in a very small space for a very low cost. Now, of course, we shouldn't confuse single board computer evolution with just Pi evolution because we've seen lots of other very exciting boards in the market. 
Not least in 2014, we saw uh, this thing. This is the, one of the first Banana Pies then to become the Banana Pro. You can see which was similar to an early Pi, not least had this massive uh, composite video connector there. I still rather like those, but the main things we got on the uh, Banana Pi that uh, I picked it out for is because we got a SATA connector, onboard SATA connector. So you could connect a SATA drive directly with a SATA connector and SATA power. And that was a, a fantastic uh, innovation for single board computers. We still haven't really seen the end of that in the marketplace. We've also seen other boards which I think have made a particular impact, not least boards from SUSE, from Hard Kernel, from Pine, from DF Robot, and from Udo. And I think the best hardware from all of these manufacturers helps us to point the way forward for the future of SBCs. Because these boards all include features, it would be nice to have a standard on next generation single board computer models. Top of many wish lists for future single board computers are more RAM and better connectivity. And to this end, it's worth pointing out that uh, ROC64 boards and Latte Panda boards could already be purchased with 4 gigabytes of RAM, whilst the top Udo X86 board already has 8 gigabytes. Also today, we've got USB 3 ports on many single board computers, including the ROC64 and the Odroid XU4, and this includes having a micro USB 3 connector on the the maker guitar. We've also, on the Hi Key 960, already got not just two full-size Type A USB 3 sockets, but also a USB C connector. USB C is an obvious connector to include on future single board computers, and it would be great to find one on the Raspberry Pi 4. Moving on to video connectivity, we can note that in addition to composite video and HDMI, which I'm sure will continue to be on single board computers, we've already got SBCs with VGA ports and also DisplayPort sockets. And indeed, the Udo X86 Advanced Plus models are already able to drive three monitors because they've got one HDMI port and two DisplayPort sockets. For many applications, the more processor power and the more GPU power you have on a single board computer, the better. And right now we've already got optical ARM boards like the Odroid XU4 and the HiKey 960. We've also already got some single board computers with Intel x86 architecture chips, such as the Latte Panda and the Udo x86 Advanced Plus models. Now, an x86 CPU allows a single board computer to run Windows and mainstream Linux distros, and I'm sure there'll be an increasing demand for such hardware in the future. So far, all x86 SBCs are Atom, Celeron, or Pentium based. However, we will start to see Intel Core M3 chips on SBCs when the new Latte Panda Alpha and Delta boards hit the market from DF Robot. Who knows? We may even get an SBC with an Intel Core M5 CPU in the next few years. And if we do, and in fact even if we don't, the use of increasingly powerful CPUs on single board computers will mean we get increasingly sophisticated cooling solutions. And as we can see here, we've already got large heat sinks or relatively large heat sinks fitted as standard on the Udo X86 Advanced Plus models, and a fan is often supplied with these as well. And on boards like the Odroid XU4, we get both a heat sink and a fan supplied, although you can have a very large passive heat sink here. And as you may remember, I've been trying some other cooling solutions on single board computers, some bigger fans and heat sinks and things like that. These may become standard on at least some single board computers in the future. Sort of related to increases in processing power is the configuration of single board computers to allow them to be upgraded. And already we can see the possibilities with a board like we've got here, which is a Lee Maker guitar. And this is actually a two-board single-board computer, so not technically a single-board computer at all in some ways, but it has a door-to-board configuration. So if I take the door-to-board, this sort of clicks in here like this, this goes in like that, and uh, clicks down nice and uh, straightforwardly. And that door-to-board on top of the machine contains a system on a chip, the memory, some NAND flash, and a power management unit. So you can replace that bit without having to replace the whole computer. And talking of onboard NAND flash, Another transition I think we can see with single board computers is the move away from always having the storage on a micro SD card. Now, as I've just mentioned, the Lee Maker guitar here has an onboard NAND flash on its daughter board. Uh, 8 gigabytes is standard, but you can get up to 32 gigabytes. 
and uh, other boards have now also got onboard NAND flash, onboard storage. For example, on the uh, Tinkerboard S, we have 16 gigabytes of onboard flash storage, whilst on the Latte Panda, we can have either 32 or here 64 gigabytes of onboard flash storage. And that's clearly very handy. You haven't got to use your SD card to uh, have your storage on USB-C. Another onboard storage option that may be adopted on an increasing number of future SBCs is to use EMMC flash modules like the one we can see here. Here this is a 32 gigabyte EMC flash module. And this can be fitted to a board already like an Odroid XU4. It's got a slot for it there. And once that's in place, this has now got 32 gigabytes of onboard flash storage. Yet another option to achieve onboard storage on future single board computers will be to fit them with M.2 slots. So again, if we look at the Hikey 960, which is a very high-end board, gives us a good idea of where future SBCs may go, we can see on the back of this board it has got an M.2 slot. Not very convenient because it actually points out that way to fit the, the card onto the, the board itself. But this is a PCIe M.2 slot on a single board computer. So you could fit a very fast SSD to this board. We can also already find an M.2 slot, in fact, two M.2 slots on the base of an UDO X86 board. As you can see here, one of these has got a Wi-Fi module already inserted, and then the other one, we could fit a SATA SSD, which would go in just like that, like that, and it would then be fastened down with a screw. So we'd have, again, onboard storage on our single board computer. And I think we'll see an increasing number of SBCs with M.2 storage options in the future. A feature that I hope we'll see in the hardware of an increasing number of single board computers, hopefully all future single board computers, is onboard wireless networking, onboard Wi-Fi and onboard Bluetooth. Now, the Raspberry Pi only got onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth with the Raspberry Pi 3 not that long ago now, and I still come across single board computers which don't have the onboard wireless networking. Boards like these, the, uh, this is an Orange Pi PC, and this is uh, an Odroid XU4. And these boards do have that their benefits. Clearly, this is the Orange Pi board. There's lots of different versions of these these days, a very good value board. And I really like the Odroid XU4. It's a very powerful single board computer, lots of great features. I particularly like the, the heatsink and the fan on this board. It just looks really nice. But this said, I think we really have got to a point where boards should have wireless networking as standard. I understand why some boards like these don't. It means the manufacturer doesn't have to have them rated as a wireless device. And I can understand the argument for boards in certain circumstances. You don't want the risk, the security risk of, of Wi-Fi if it's been used as a server or as a, a control board. But even if it is being used as a control board or a server, it's great to be able to get to it via, via Wi-Fi or wireless networking. So I think we need to have that on future single board computers. And I think we will. I think also we'll start to see single board computers which can take a module to give them 5G wireless connectivity. Uh, because we're going to see an increasing use of single board computers, I think, in um, cloud AI and in cloud robotics, where that 5G network connection will be really important. Another thing I hope we will see, we're starting to see on single board computers, is a move away on, on many future models, on more powerful models, from micro USB as the power connector. And here, these two boards I've picked out partially because they haven't got onboard Wi-Fi and on onboard Bluetooth, but partially because they've got decent power connectors. They've got a proper barrel connector there for power there, and indeed, the same thing on the Odroid XU4. So I think we've got to a point now where single board computer manufacturers have got to say, yes, it's great to use micro USB power because people have got the devices around, the adapters around to use with a mobile phone, that's how it all started. But let's be honest, most mobile phone power adapters these days can't power most single board computers, so we should really move to a better means of giving them power, and that means using a barrel jack. Now, putting together everything I've talked about so far, we could conclude that future single board computers will have at least eight gigabytes of RAM, an eight core ARM processor, or else an Intel Core M3 or even Intel Core M5 CPU. And they'd also have USB 3.0 or 3.1 connectivity with USB-C ports, onboard flash storage, or an EMMC flash socket, or one or more M.2 slots for storage, um, onboard SATA perhaps, multiple HDMI or display ports, onboard Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 5G capabilities, a good solid barrel jack for power, and a hefty passive or active cooling solution which would all be amazing, truly amazing. It would give us a future single board computer, a bit like the one we're looking at here. The only problem is such a future SBC would be significantly over-specified and too expensive for the vast majority of current single board computer users. 
And that's why I think what we're going to see with the future of Singapore computers in the next few years is a very clear segmentation in the marketplace. Yes, we're going to see some very high spec boards with the kind of features I've just been talking about, but we'll also have a lot of boards at the same price point as the current Raspberry Pi. And indeed, I think the Raspberry Pi Foundation has been absolutely right to keep the main constraint on Pi development as its $35 price tag. They could have added all sorts of features to a Raspberry Pi by now, the sort of features I've shown you already exist on many competitor boards. But they've kept to the philosophy that the Raspberry Pi was always intended to be a low-cost computer. A computer that could be used by makers in all kinds of projects, to build small servers, to learn programming, to run robots, to be a media player, all that type of stuff. And you don't need to go very high end in terms of computer power to do that. And so I think increasingly it's going to be very clear that we've got low end SBCs like the Pi and high end SBCs for more industrial applications. And indeed, I think in, in parallel with the development of boards at the same price point of size as the Raspberry Pi, we'll also see a lot more boards of the same sort of price point and size as the current Raspberry Pi Zero, allowing us to put computer power into an increasing range of projects in a very small space for a very low price. So that's where I think we are. Singapore computers really separating out to be two different types of hardware in the foreseeable future. Single board computers are getting more and more popular, and they've got a great future ahead as both consumer devices and industrial components. But now that's it for another video. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh,